VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome to VIP Access. You know, I always appreciate your company. Every other week, we have an amazing guest, and you're here to check out who I'm speaking to. I am super excited because this week I'm having one of my favorite artists. I know I always say this, but yo, I have a lot of favorite artists, but she's one of the most special and dear to me because her music speaks to me. She sings and um, writes about healing, love, political liberation, self-love, self-expression, African beauty, the, and the interpretation of our African culture. You might have already listened to her EP, Ereo, and then the album, came in 2022 and it's called Yonika. Yonika. <laughs> you know, if you are Luo, then you understand what we're talking about. We'll explain to you. Welcome Akot Jumadi to VIP Access. Thank you for having me. What's up, girl? Uh, nothing much. <laughs> Just liking and living and loving and learning and grounding and creating and trying and resting and yeah, pretty much Mm. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> I'm going to say something. Say it. You are such an African beauty. And I know you probably get this. But I just want to celebrate your beauty. Like, it's in and out. Your hair, the Bantu notes, you know, just the way you carry yourself. I feel like you embrace the Africanness and the Kenyanness of you. And I just find that so attractive. <laughs> Sante, Sante, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you are just quite something. But then I feel like this beauty is the same beauty I experience when I listen to your music. Your music speaks about various things. You know, you, sp you sing a lot in Luo, which is my language. But then I am not loving your music because it's Luo music, but it just really gives me the calmness. Yeah. And it would be music from any other part of the world. As a matter of fact, sometimes it I feel like your music is very much kind of desert sounds, mm -hmm. is it? Um, or, or, or have you ever had that? Well, desert sounds, music from the north, is definitely one of my strongest influences. And yeah, it, I get it. Yes. It's, it, I, I feel it from somewhere. It's somewhere in there. I don't know where it is, but it's there. Yeah, it's somewhere in there, definitely. It's definitely an influence. And uh, visiting Sudan, again, I was re South Sudan, I was reintroduced to like music from the desert with ouds and the way people sing. And I think because my people originally are from there, somehow... We are desert people. Exactly. Somehow, you know, it crosses over. And, like, that's one of the things about music. It can be carried on. And I think I sort of carried on parts 100%. of this. percent. And I feel yeah. like you even carry some of that Malian sound. Mm -hmm. Even. And sometimes you even bring in the rock element. Yeah. And I find it so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. It's like music is expression and all this um, sort of influences I've learned over the years growing mm. up and then becoming into, you know, a young adult and then defining my influences in mm. music. And this is everything I, I used to listen to and sort of my expression of that. And the reason I think it transcends you maybe understanding everything that I may be saying is because I think some of the best musicians I've listened to were instrumental jazz musicians that were just playing their horns or someone who was just singing and the feeling, that that transformative feeling, that is what I, I think I carry on in my music mm. as well. And I Fantastic. hope to carry for a long time. <laughs> of course, of course. Yes. So all those who are listening and watching, Akot Jumadi is not just your ordinary musician or performer or songwriter, but she is an architect in many ways. She, you know, orchestrates different sounds, fuses them together with contemporary music and, um, you know, just makes this round sound, which is... I feel even future sounds like do you have one sound uh that is hard to define uh as my influences grow and they're different every time and when i'm writing a song or when i'm creating a melody it depends on the moment and the inspiration that catches me and i could be anywhere or i could be listening to anything or i could be going through something mm -hmm. and then that is the feeling it's the energy that's tapped into whatever piece i'm creating at the moment so it varies differently 
but mostly it's hard to define my sound as one particular sound. It's Afro Tarab, it's Tarab blues, it has Tarab in it, it has Benga, it has Roomba, which I grew up listening to a lot. It has elements of jazz, a little bit of country, a little bit of rock, a little bit of hip hop, which I'm a big fan of. It has some funk. And obviously um, low, low folk music low as well. folk, but the bass, that's the bass. Yeah. Now the bass of the music is folk music, mm. which is low gospel music that I used to listen to, you know, when I was growing up or if it was a funeral and like we'd all come together and you'd hear how the women would sing and that those melodies got stuck in my mm. head. And I feel like that was one of the most beautiful expressions of you know of pain or of loss or of happiness that I experienced when I was young as well so the base of the music is folk and then all these other elements are borrowed um, from other influences and mm. then it creates whatever it's becoming so yeah that's so deep that's so deep when's the earliest moment you remember you know just um, acknowledging yourself as an artist um, or seeing yourself as an artist as because an you're artist. one in many ways. Mm, this must be, must have been, like I always sang and I always listened to music. But when I, I think I was in high school and I went to boarding school and I was far from home. And I, it wasn't an environment that was, I was very accepting of at first. Mm. But then I, I was going through so much at the time as a young adult who's growing. So writing music or singing music was one of my escapes mm. or something that I found so easy to come as a sort of therapy to myself mm. to endure whatever I was going through or whatever I thought was hard at the time. So music, I started writing a lot. I had like a bunch of books where I wrote lyrics and songs and I'd write melodies or sing with some friends. And at that time, I, I always used to sing, but I think until I got to high school is when I was like, this could actually be a thing. It didn't seem possible at the time with the circumstances around, but I kind of had the the light bulb that you always have that maybe this is something I can do, this is someone I can become. Mm. Yes. And so when did you take it professionally and you know decide these are the first songs which are going to be in my EP and then you know, you would later have an album which came out in 2022. Oh, that was a long process, but not so long. Um, when I joined Compass, I I started looking for other things that I could do to make a little money on the side or just to have fun because, you know, to also have the monotony of just school <clears throat> can be... That's you. <coughs> can be, can be, how do you say, it can be repetitive. Yes, yes, of course. And so um, I happened to go to this place called Dunga Hill Camp with some friends, and they were organizing an event. And then the owner saw me sing, and then he came and said, Oh, you sing so well. Do you think you can come and do this thing here weekly? Is Jack Powell. Shout out to Jack Powell, by the way. And it, that's how we began. This, is, this must have been 20. 16, mm -hmm. 2015, mm -hmm. and um, I started I started playing as a vocalist with a guitarist, and then eventually um, found it more found a deeper need to express myself through melody. I always say my new bio update would be I paint in sound, because it's through melody and music that I'm able to create and you know push the boundaries of what maybe my emotions, what I'm feeling, and yeah, so definitely then is when it started, and then it grew into a band, and then we had many more people who were also interested in playing music, and then I got interested in other instruments, so this is moving forward, moving forward, then 2018, I graduated, and I didn't know what to do. Uh, one of my uh, options was to move back to Nairobi. I was already a live performer. I'd been, do I'd been doing it for like 2015, 2016, 2017. And where were you? Kisumu. 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 I was in between Kisumu and Kampala Fantastic. at the time. So it was a lot of live performer, live performances. And I think these were very vital years for me as an artist because I grew my stage presence. I performed for very different people. I jammed with many artists because there were so many people from outside, experts coming in, and some of them happened to be musicians. So I, it was, that was the moment of sort of sharpening my skill mm. and being best at what I do. Then I moved back to Nairobi, 2019, and I really, I'd already started playing some festivals in Kampala as well. 
but I didn't have any music of my own, like a catalog. So it was really important for me to put my mind together and then come back to Nairobi or record in Kisumu and put together a body of work that would solidify sort of my stance in the music. I graduated, asked for a gap year for my parents so I could figure out what I want to do with my life. And music seemed like the right thing. And I just delved into it. Fast forward 2020, the pandemic happened, but I'd been preparing like all these years to release. So somehow, I know many people went through a hard time during the pandemic, but for me as an artist, it was my moment of, it was the moment that I think sort of came out as a musician that I was, because many people were seated or many people had time to sit and push up lots of noise. So 2020, and then it happened, and everything sort of just went into, <laughs> into I don't know. Many colors. An exodus of sorts yeah. began. And then, yeah, I keep practicing, keep playing. It never gets um, easier as an artist, especially as a live performer. If you have to jam, if you have to play with many other musicians, keep, I'm keeping on putting in the work. And then 2022, <laughs> I'm saying much, but 2022, I got funding from Prince Claus Seed Award that I won in 2021 to record the album. And I did, I put together everyone in the band and the studio and I was like, I want this, I want that, I want that. And I want this album to sound like this. And so far, so good. I mean, so far, excellent. <laughs> well done, Thank well you. done. Um, you. I want to talk about you know, the, the the EP and the album. So Ereyo um, in Luo, our you know, tribal language yeah. is uh, Where, where Where's is the Way? way yeah. um, and then Yonika, that is the album. Yes. This is the the way. This is the way or the way is here. The way is here. So could you explain to us, to the, me, you know, that kind of play. In the journey. <laughs> combination. Well, Ereo seemed like the most appropriate uh, title for the first body of work. It was my introduction, or like people's introduction to my music and mm. my sound. And at the time, I'm a young woman, I'm growing up, I'm experiencing my environment, I'm experiencing myself, I'm getting into the music industry sort of without proper structures that mm. I've learned before about this is how to go about it. So it's trusting my soul and asking where is the way for for me to begin and it was not it was it was not only a singular moment as well it was also a broader perspective i think politically the people in kisumu were going through a lot at the time and sometimes you'd walk in the streets and you'd see how that had had affected them in a way and uh, i feel it's a responsibility of artists to reflect the times and i just like i was I was asking, where is the way for my people and like the whole peoples in the world, like collectively, mm. like how do we move forward? How do we reconcile ourselves with our governments, with our families, with our friendships? Like how do we find a way to move forward into something that can push us forward as a people into a higher vibration of sorts? Mm. Because we could get stuck in the same places sometimes and it's frustrating. And it's also, I don't know, I feel we need better. We need ease, more ease in the world right now. And so Ariel was to ask those questions I had within myself and without and sort of try to find a way or maybe encourage people who were going through whatever at the time that, you know, we're, we're on the journey. We're looking, yes. we're going, we're searching. And I didn't know if we could get there or where the way was, mm. but it felt right at that time to ask where is the way. Mm -hmm. And it opened up so many doors and so many people who listened to the music felt like they related or they could understand. or And that was it. It was needed at the time. Mm. So 2020, Ereo came out and magic happened. Afterwards, it was it was more shows, it was more studio time, it was more performances, and still the journey and continuing to know myself, which led up to Yonika, which is the first album that we released. Um, and uh, Yonika was, after asking Ereo, where is the way? I was sort of like living, living the life of Ereo and the questions I was 
asking to live. And somehow I was like, you know what? We spend a lot of time looking for something outside ourselves, someone to come save us, someone to bring us the you, the way. But in real sense, no, the way is here. It's in the side of you yeah, sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. The way is here. It's in the relationship we have with our friendships is the amount of work we're willing to put into the collective liberation. And that way is not anywhere else but here. Mm. So Yonika was more of a stronger statement of we look outside, we ask these questions, but the way is in the contribution that we all play collectively together to move forward as a people, to heal ourselves, to to be free, to do whatever we want to do. Yonika, it's not anywhere else, and no one will bring it for us. So when we realize the the value of maybe the people we have around us and the gifts we have and the things that we can contribute for humanity, we can't wait for tomorrow. We have to start now to whatever calls you to make a change or do whatever you want to. The time is now. So Yonika remains that statement of the way is here, the way is now, the time is now. It's like not tomorrow, but now in the ways here. That is so powerful, and I love the way you explain it and the way you interpret it, because you're saying it's a collective, um, you know, effort. You know, it's, it's, it's us all. It's you, it's me, and it's in different ways. It could be friendships. It could be, you know, family. It could be politically. It could be society. Um, and I think in, in our industry, a lot of us speak about Africa's time is now, or maybe uh, it's time for African music, but basically you're saying, it, it's time just for liberation, you know, yeah. no matter what might have been held, holding you back or no matter what challenges that you might have, you might just find it within you and within your space to be the solution exactly. to the problems that you have. And I find that very powerful and, and very unifying. Yeah. Yeah, Interesting. because we all feel the same things. You all go through mostly similar emotions. And I think, I don't know how it works for everybody else, but I feel that you know, if we look at the people around us a little more like ourselves, then it makes it easier for for us to navigate life or for us to understand other people, whether they are black or white, different from who we are. I think we go through the same things. And as much people would relate to you more than you think mm -hmm. they would. So, yeah, we're not so different. We're, we, the world or... Things may make it seem like we are, but we're all humans living and figuring out what our purpose is in this moment. So, pole pole, yeah. <laughs> Yonika is a live music album. It's a live music album. We recorded Dope. it. We recorded it. All the vocals, we did add, you know, some add-ons. Like, I went back to studio to of do, course. to solidify the vocals, but it was recorded all live. So we had dope. a studio, we had the bass and the drums, and we had just everybody. It was like, it was like almost three weeks of constant, continuous studio work. It was a lot, but I'm so happy and I'm so glad to, you know, about my bandmates and my producers who made it happen. And we go to studio in the morning, have tea, or Uji do some rehearsals, and then get in and lock down and record. And it went on and it went on. And it was so beautiful to create. I wanted it to be live because I, I believe live music has a power to it. It's a it's music that's made in the moment. It can be replicated. Like a live performance can never be the same twice. It's like in the moment. It's in the time. With the riff that the guitarist would play or the notes that the singer would hit it's like it's life there's a magic to it and it had to be recorded live there was no other way mm. yeah i love live music myself so i just i wanted to hear something that i like to hear in my ears that's so, so dope because you're such a great live performer i mean i've seen you live but also it's amazing to hear an album which gives me kind of that live music feel because sometimes you have artists you like to listen to and then you don't have time 
or the space to go see them perform. So um, I don't know, with the latest album, it gave me that. And when I saw you perform again, like you said, it just can be replicated. But again, it wasn't very, it wasn't the same thing I had in the album. Mm. But then it, it was just beautiful, like to, to be there, to see you, you know, hear you make the music live. Um, I, I mentioned this to you. One of my favorite songs in the album is Me Now Way. Yeah. <laughs> um, tell me about that song. Uh, that's the, that's one of the, I think that's one of my favorite songs in the album too. We wrote it in Zanzibar when we we're doing our second tour. Uh, so first time we were in Zanzibar, I was traveling with one of my bandmates, Henry Nguge, and we did uh, 2021. So 2000, December, 2000, December, January 2021, 2022 as its beginning. And it was so beautiful. It was, you know, it was like going through the ferries and being in a different place. It could feel as if you're in a different time zone. And Zanzibar is a beautiful island. So it just did, it made sense to write the song at the time. And we were jamming, we were playing a show actually. And then we had the space in between where we're supposed mm. to be resting, but somehow we were still on stage. And then Henry was like, oh, play something, play something, I'll follow you. And then we just started playing. Wow. And uh, being inspired by all the many beautiful people I saw and all the many beautiful places I saw, it was just like, Ningependa Kukujua, like, tell me about you, like, who are you, like, yeah, me in a way, like, if you, if you could give me a chance to get to know you, mm -hmm. I would offer you a lot, I would give you a lot if you allow, so... Uh, it was inspired a lot by Swahili poetry. I was reading a lot of Swahili poetry when I was in Zanzibar. I got introduced to Biki Dude, who's an amazing, amazing Tarab singer. Legendary a legend. lady. It was amazing. And it was so nice to listen to that and hear how she used to write. And she was so old, but she's still... Um, she's still singing and has that strength. She's gone now. Yeah. But God it was... her soul in peace. It's true. It was borrowing from that, paying homage to Swahili culture, to Swahili towns, mm. to Swahili poetry, and to Swahili way of life. Like, the Swahili women are known to be very cowardly and they hide, but this is not so true because I've met them and they're some of the most intelligent women. They sit back behind the background but they're very bold as well in how they approach other aspects mm. of life so it was me paying homage to that paying homage to Zanzibar and also exp expressing my emotions and wanting to get to know someone or somewhere or something if mm. they allowed me the opportunity so Mina Way was born and it was the first song and we used to love to jam so it made sense to release it as the first track from the album mm. I didn't even know it was the first track it was just my track of that album <laughs> that's nice though I'm, yeah. I'm happy it's yeah, so it nice and now that you you know give the backstory that's why I love this podcast because you know I say with artists and sometimes it's this interesting backstory and they're like oh wow now I understand how the music <laughs> is made or was made so um, that makes a lot of sense and when I think about what, how you, what you've said I see you all sailing and I see the guitar being played like even the guitar, guitar riffs are kind of Swahili sounds influence in a way yeah. so you know really dope song really Thank dope you. music I am just such a fan of yours like anything you speak or say I, I'm just gonna buy <laughs> Thank you <laughs> Thank you Applaud Thank you and yeah. come through to the live shows it's always different I Thank you for always actually inviting me and it's, some, most times we're like passing each other but you always make a conscious effort to say yeah. hey pull, pull up Yeah, I want yeah. you all to feel the energy the vibe that that I get before I give to the crowd, which That's I so feel dope. is incredible. That's so dope. So anything you want to say to your fans, um, you know, anybody listening, what are the plans for 2024? Um, if there are no solid plans, you know, gratitude also is, mm -hmm. is good. So much gratitude. I think that has been a major theme for me this year. Music has opened so many doors for me. And I've been able to do so much that I didn't think. I mean, I thought about it, but to see it manifest, it was magical. It humbled me a bit as well, because it shows me the amount of responsibility I've been given and the amount of work now I have to sort of give and how much more radical my work can be, rather. Mm. 2024, um, so hopefully a Europe tour. I've been working on that with other people I met. So let's see how it goes. I'm hopeful. Um, 
I definitely creating more music, but with other musicians. I wanna, I want to jam. I think I've been creating music with musicians who play, but I also want to create more music with musicians who sing, and musicians who arrange or produce as well. So, and also a lot of production. I finished my production course. So now I'm sort of starting to cook my own things. Ooh, and that's exciting. Very exciting. I can, I'm excited with the things that I'm creating already. More guitar playing. I'll be doing aggressive guitar and nyatiti playing. I love it. Yes, because like traveling a bit has taught me that, I mean, as a musician, I always have to be ready with my guitar because a jam session could happen anywhere and I want to tap into that magic. So 2024 is tour, more tours, more traveling, more playing, more groundedness, more alignment with the message, more flow, more love, more magic. Listen, I'm here for this energy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for this energy. Before this interview started, I was yeah. already asking you, like, I can tell, like, you do your best to protect your energy. I just love the energy you have, you carry um, yourself with. It's, um, it's, 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 it's protected, you know, it's kind of, you mm. just kind of have a bubble. I'm glad that's the idea you find. I usually think I'm a bit of uh, a mess, but like. Who you? A little bit, yeah. I mean, not like, <laughs> like we're terrible. All, we're all a mess. <laughs> exactly, but I'm, I'm so happy you get the idea. I do try to just be present. I, I feel think. like I understand the personality. Thank you. Yeah. Asante. Thank you for Asante. coming to VAP Access. Thank you. I'm so glad. I can't <laughs> wait to see how dope we look. They say I we look. I know. <laughs> you all so, see yeah. us. So thank you so much. Asante. Akot Jumadi. Thank you. Enjoy the Akot rest of your Akot Jumadi week. on VAP Access. Such an amazing performer, singer, songwriter, composer, and now music producer. Big up to all the female music producers out there or females okay. just doing their thing. We love to see females win. We love to see everybody win, but especially females. I always promise you amazing artists coming here to VAP Access. And um, please check out Akot Jumadi. Her music is just beautiful. And you can follow her on any social media channels. You can stream her music. You can also follow me, Aniko, and Aniko TV. VIP access is streaming in all on all your favorite um, platforms. We also have the podcast on Nation FM every Sundays, and the show is also on Ghana's MX24 TV every Tuesdays and Saturdays. So hey, we'll be back next week with another um, beautiful Amazing personality. Nice. Thank you, Akot. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Aniko. Asante. Amazing. Thank you. VIP access, VIP access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.